Hi guys. This is D. Igorotech. Today, I will show you how to configure PPPoE with VLAN ID on FortiGate Firewall. For some countries, Internet Service Provider requires VLAN ID for data traffic and voice. Let's begin. For this demo, I will only show you how to configure PPPoE with VLAN ID and how to configure the policy using the interface. You may check my other videos on the advanced configurations. We are going to use this 40 gate 60 f with firmware version 7.2.3. This is the latest firmware version during the time of this recording. Now, go to Network. Interfaces. As you can see, my laptop is connected to internal port 1. We are going to configure PPPoE with VLAN ID on WAN 1. Click Create New. Interfaces. For the name, normally, we input the ISP name for our reference or you can input any name based on your liking. For the alias, it's optional. Type would be VLAN. For the interface, choose the interface where you want to configure the VLAN which in our case is WAN 1. Now, input the VLAN ID, this is the one provided by your ISP. In my case, it's VLAN 500. The role should be WAN since it's the internet facing interface. For the estimated bandwidth, you can input your bandwidth speed or you can leave it to default. Next is the addressing mode. Choose PPPoE. Enter the PPPoE details provided by your ISP. This is a username and password. You can click on the eye icon to verify your password. Retrieve default gateway is enabled so we don't need to configure the default route. Keep this in mind. No need to configure the default static route if the retrieve default gateway is already enabled. For the distance, you can leave it to default if you have a single ISP. The distance will only concern you if you have two or more ISPs. You may check my other videos on the full configuration guide. Next is administrative access. This is how you access or manage this device through this interface. Enable HTTPS for GUI or web access. You must disable HTTP, as you know it's unsecured. Ping for troubleshooting purposes. For security purposes, never enable SSH on internet facing interface. Well, this all depends on your preference or the customer's requirements. Make sure the status is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. Now, notice that there's a plus sign on WAN1, this is because we created a sub-interface which is the ISP VLAN under this interface. Click on it to expand. If you hover your cursor over it, you can view the interface details. Or you double-click on it to view the configuration and status. Here, you can see all the details and notice the status is connected which means the connection was successful so the device can now access the internet. Well, if you encountered this error, you could simply click on retry. And if still failed to connect then we have a few methods to test. First, double check your username and password, and make sure it's correct. Next is to reboot the ISP modem or change the cable. Another method is to test to reboot the firewall. I'm already connected but notice that I received private IP address. This is because some internet service providers here in Malaysia assign a private IP address to lower internet plans. You can click on Renew to receive new IP address. This is if you're not using fixed IP address. Let's go back to interfaces. Again, expand the WAN1 interface. From here, you can also view the IP address received. Let's now try to ping Google DNS. Open the CLI. Enter the command execute ping 8.8.8.8. .8 it should be able to access the internet. My laptop is connected to the LAN interface so let's test to ping the Google DNS as well. Open the command prompt. Enter the command ping 8.8.8.8. .8 My laptop cannot access the internet. We have to configure first the policy. Go to policy and objects. Choose firewall policy. Notice that there's a default configured policy. We will delete this policy then we will create new policy just for me to show you how to create a new policy using the sub-interface or the VLAN interface. Besides, 
some of the firmwares don't have a default policy configured. If you are new to FortiGate, this window is where you configure the NAT policies. Now, click on Create New. Give it a name based on your preference. Let's give a name of LAN to WAN to make it simple. For the incoming interface, this would be your LAN interface which in my case is the internal. For the outgoing interface, please keep this in mind. We configured the sub-interface or VLAN on WAN 1 but, we are not going to point it to this interface. Instead, we are going to point it to the sub-interface or the VLAN interface. Next is the source, this would be the source address. You can select all, but best practice is to select the internal or LAN address. Make sure the address matches the internal or LAN subnet. If you can't find your LAN address then you need to manually create it. For the destination. Since this is only a very basic policy and for internet access then we will select all. Schedule to always. For the services, choose all. Make sure NAT is enabled. For the security profiles, you can check my other videos. For this demo, we are only going to use the default profiles. You can simply enable and choose the profile you prefer. Again, this is based on your preference or your customer's requirements. But best practice is to enable all security profiles for the basic all-to-all -all policies. For the log allowed traffic, I suggest you choose all sessions for troubleshooting purposes. Lastly, make sure the policy is enabled then click OK to apply the changes. You can see the new created policy. Internal interface to the sub-interface or the VLAN interface. Name is LAN to WAN. Source is internal. Destination to all. Schedule to always. Services to all. NAT is enabled and you can see the security profiles configured. This policy means, internal can access the internet without any restrictions, no scheduling, and can use any protocols. Now, since we already created the NAT policy, let's go back to the command prompt again and test to ping the Google DNS. Since we previously used the command then we can simply hit up arrow on our keyboard then hit enter. Notice that my laptop can now access the internet. Wait for a bit then you will also notice the network icon will be connected. And now you can see it's connected to the internet. To verify, we can open another tab then test to access 40net.com. Success. We can access the internet, it means the configuration was successful. Now, we can go back to the FortiGate tab. Let's refresh the page. Notice that the internet traffic is already passing through this policy. If your ISP don't require any VLAN for data traffic then you can check the link on the description below for the configuration guide. Well, that's all for today's demonstration and I really hope you liked this video. If you are new to my channel, please don't forget to like, share, subscribe and click on the notification bell for more amazing tutorials. Thank you and see you in the next video.